This is a continuation of my Sleep for Optimal Performance series. Today, we're gonna to focus on a neurological strategy to reduce our physiological activation. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Friesen from Friesen Performance, where I help you achieve your greatest potential by optimizing your psychology, physiology, and neurology. Recall that physiological activation is one of the main causes of sleep disruption. It's when our brains and bodies are too revved up. In order to understand what we're gonna talk about today, we need to understand something called sleep spindles. Sleep spindles are patterns of electrical activity as measured by an EEG that occur in stage two sleep. This is non-REM sleep. This occurs soon after we fall asleep. Scientists are still trying to fully understand sleep spindles but we know they tend to be involved in three things. For one, we believe that sleep spindles are involved in learning and memory. When we learn a particular thing during the day, the areas in the brain that light up also tend to light up during the night with sleep spindles. So it's believed that sleep spindles play a role in helping transferring what you've learned into long-term storage. Sleep spindles seem to be involved in our motor abilities. We know that sleep spindles increase when we're sleeping after we've learned a new motor task during the day. These are sequences of movements. Think about learning an instrument or learning a sport. Most important to our discussion today is that sleep spindles seem to be involved in sensory shutdown while we sleep. In other words, they seem to be involved in suppressing information that's picked up by our senses when we're asleep. These can be sounds, movements, light, etc. Sleep spindles are generated by the thalamus, which is an area deep in our brain. Essentially, when the thalamus produces sleep spindles, it prevents us from waking up or getting woken up as we're falling asleep. You can think of sleep spindles as the brain's own noise-canceling technology. Wouldn't it be great if there was a way to increase our sleep spindles? Well, there is. You may have heard of neurofeedback, Neurofeedback involves training our brain's electrical activity. I'm gonna talk more about neurofeedback with regard to stress and improving performance in later videos. The earliest forms of neurofeedback focused on two major disorders, epilepsy and ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. The original training focused primarily on increasing something called sensory motor rhythm, which is a rhythm in the brain that is essentially identical to sleep spindles, but we produce these during the day. This was discovered by Dr. Barry Sturman. Sensory motor rhythm neurofeedback, what we call SMR training, is sought to stabilize the brain to calm it down, especially the sensory and motor system. Research has shown that SMR training has been effective in a number of areas. One is in the severity and frequency of seizures. It's also been shown to reduce behavioral disinhibition. These are things like hyperactivity and impulsivity. In addition, it's been shown to improve working memory and attention. So you can see how this would be effective for ADHD. Most relevant for us today is that SMR training when we're awake seems to increase the number of sleep spindles when we're asleep. Not only that, it's been shown to reduce the amount of time it takes people to fall asleep and how many times they wake up during the night. In addition, SMR training has been found to increase the amount of slow wave sleep we experience. This is the part of sleep where our brains clean itself and heals. It's also been shown to increase subjective sleep quality and improve memory performance the following day. The main barrier is being able to get access to this technology. At this point in time, you're best off working with a certified neurofeedback practitioner through the BCIA, or the Biofeedback Certification International Alliance. At this point in time, I'm not aware of any decent consumer-grade neurofeedback devices that can train up SMR. And believe me, I've spent a small fortune on pretty much every product that's come to market. I'm board certified in neurofeedback through the BCIA, so I've got a lot of experience doing SMR training with different types of patients and clients. I've personally found it to be effective in patients who struggle with ADHD, impulsivity, hyperactivity, and other types of physiological activation, like generalized anxiety disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. I've also found it helpful with peak performers, 
These are either athletes or executives, for example, who want to improve their sleep and their performance. But most relevant to this video is I found it helps patients and clients fall asleep and stay asleep. In my own personal experience of using SMR neurofeedback, after I've used it for a few weeks, usually two to three times a week, I notice I'm less physiologically activated, particularly in the evenings, but I also find that I fall asleep faster and I tend to stay asleep. In the next series of videos, I'm gonna focus on the third major cause of sleep disruption, cognitive overactivation. This is perceived by most people as the main cause of their sleep difficulties, not being able to turn off their minds. If this sounds like you, I recommend you stay tuned for the next videos. I'm also gonna focus on another type of neurofeedback called alpha neurofeedback that's been shown to be very effective at quieting the mind. So until next time, keep moving forward.